1989 World Championship team are here in advance of tomorrow night's 25th anniversary reunion. Teammates including Dave Henderson, you see him there, Tony Phillips, Jose Canseco, also here, who told us earlier his book, Juiced, is now a bit of a regret. I regret writing it. I'm not much about it. Uh, I regret putting my, my friends in the book. And even though it was a true accounting of what happened to me in Major League Baseball, uh, you know, the reason why I did it was, was not a good reason. It was because I was angry at the time of Major League Baseball. And I was kind of put between a rock and a hard place with Harper Collins, meaning, you know, we're not going to tell your story if you don't name names. And uh, believe me, I struggled with that for a very long time. But I think eventually, my youth, my lack of experience, my anger towards Major League Baseball going out, being able to find a job at 37 years old, 36 years old as a player, really overwhelmed me, and I wasn't thinking correctly. And uh, I definitely regret doing that. We promised you. Jose Canseco, and he is in the booth with us. Let's take a look at his 17-year major nice league career. Nice picture. What yeah. is that? Am I doing the Macarena there or something? What is that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was in 1990 when you were in Cincinnati going, when the tight pants were in and the hip swing was yeah. in, I guess. It's all right. It's all right. You look good. Number 33, that's familiar. Got the guns, the pipes, still everything looking good? A little belly. You know, yeah. A little belly. Yeah, you're, not, you're not the Lone Ranger there. Don't worry about that. No. So you're giving the forearm bash to some of the autograph seekers yesterday when you were signing autographs? Yeah, they want to feel what a forearm bash really <laughs> felt like back then. But I said, wait a minute. You know, when we did that, we did it a lot harder, and you had to defend yourself against the forearm bash of likes of, of, of McGuire and, uh, and Dave Henderson. Those guys are strong. So what do you say now when you see some teams actually – Utilize the the forearm bash when home runs. Have you seen it? Is it oh, just, sure. It seems like there are some some teams, some players that are doing that. I've seen it. I love it. I do, I, I, I think it's great. They uh, they're out there remembering. I guess the old Oakland A's and the forearm bash, and <laughs> you know it was very contagious back then, and everybody everyone was doing it. Well, during introductions, when you guys came out of center field, obviously. Eck and Ricky got the loudest ovation, but Ray and I looked up and we thought your ovation may have been the third loudest. Did that catch you by surprise just a little bit? And how did it make you feel? It did. And I'll tell you, for me, between what's happened, um, I wrote that book, Juice, coming back here. I didn't know what to expect. I've been an emotional wreck for the last week, finding out that I was coming the last couple of days. I really couldn't eat at all. Very emotional back there. And I'll tell you, I, I want to thank the fans. I want to thank the players, Tony La Russa, for accepting me back with open arms because it was uh, <clears throat> the most hectic time of my life. I didn't know what was going to happen, mm -hmm. and and I'm glad it's over in a way. But the acceptance and and I, and, you know, it feels like I'm back with my family again. Well, it had to feel great because Manny Machado just booed off the face of the earth, and you show up. This play goes goes crazy over 36,000, and uh, yeah, it helps. I mean, the guy gets booed, then he hits a home run, <laughs> then he gets booed again. <laughs> wow. <laughs> no, but that's. But I think it's commendable that when the invitations were sent out that you accept because uh, I, I'm sure there were a lot of things and people wondering where you're going to show up actually Mike Gallego I say I think you had talked to him and he's had the fan fest and people ask and Mike at the time evidently had confirmed through you that you were going to be coming and, you know got an applause in as well so commendable to you to, uh, <coughs> you have no yeah you would thank you Ray. you have no idea how happy I'm to come back I'm I'm going to sleep well tonight <laughs> Well, listen, you had a great career here. I mean, people cannot forget it. I'm thinking in the old stadium, which would have been 86, <clears> your, uh, your rookie year coming up, and the, the old stadium, I say the old, before they built Mount Davis, you hit yeah. your first home run. Right. Left center. Left center. Up Off on of the uh, Russell, I think. Exactly. Yes, I yeah. Jeff so, Russell, yeah. Uh, don't bring his name up. The late Bill King, that, that name just did not register well. Because he was supposed to do a lot more than he did when he came here. So, right. But anyway, but uh, and then the Grand Slam in 88. World Series, 88. World Series. My first Grand Slam at the Major League level, which, you know, it's funny because I hit a lot of three run, ho run home runs, but I couldn't get that Grand Slam going. It was, it was, it was kind of strange. <laughs> I, I, I think I just pressed too much. And you hit the camera, the camera yes. in center field, the, the, the slam, but... Gee, I looked thin there. <laughs> I was. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad you said that because I was. Yeah, look at Maggie. All you guys were thin, you know? You're in shape. You're young. Now, this was the one. How about this one? Now, Flanagan. The, 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 yeah, but the most amazing thing, though. You I missed said, it. I, I thought, yeah. You did. I did. 
fifth deck at Sky Dome and you've missed it? Well, the Sky Dome, the ball carries so much that oh. really, no, I've hit balls a lot harder than that. <laughs> but for some reason, that ball carried a long way to Sky Dome. And it was, it was right down the line. It, it was an illusion. It was only like 350. That's how it went. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I don't think the people in Toronto thought that. Yeah, they still, they still talk about it. it. Yeah. Yeah. When you came back and checked your head, what's wrong with it? I didn't get it all. <laughs> yeah, give me <laughs> Or I lied. What it, well, that, I think the latter because... I uh, fibbed a little bit. When we go in there and Cap and I look up there and, and see that, and he didn't get it all, and you know, there are not many guys that have gone up that. Carter, I think Joe Carter did, and... Uh, Ramir, uh, Manny did. Manny, okay. I think a couple times from what I heard. But, but I mean, yeah. just uh, really... It's an area that most players wouldn't even dream about going there. They're happy with the second level at Rogers Center. But you had a great career here. And, you know, the, uh, the postseason and, and, you know, talk about, of course, uh, the 89 season, uh, a special season, I'm sure, mm. for all of you. But, you know, you had mentioned Tony LaRusse. To and we've heard a lot of players talking about how Tony kind of set the tone for the ball club. What did you see in Tony and, and how much he helped you? Well, he obviously really think about it. He had a lot of characters, a lot of egos, a lot of different personalities to do with. He, he had a team of superstars, mm -hmm. and he had basically put these guys on the field and get a, a, a get them to play together. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I always thought he was a master at that. I always thought that he set rules, and he expected you to, to play by those rules. And, uh, you know, a couple of the rules, he said, never be late to the ballpark, and when you get on the field, pit, uh, play 100%. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you, I was late to the field a couple times, and I heard it, and I got it, and, and I understood it. So uh, he was just he was just a great technician out there, and and he really knew how to get the, uh, the best chemistry out of, out of all these superstars together. In 1988, Jose Canseco, 42 home runs, 40 stolen bases, becoming the first player to go 40-40 in a season in big league history. Only three have achieved it sits then Bonds, Rodriguez, and Soriano. So quite a feat right there at County Stadium in Milwaukee. They actually let me take that bag. I'm amazed. Yeah. I was kind of begging the umpire. <laughs> Can I take it? Can I take so it? did you have, I mean, it, when you got close to those numbers, the 40 homers and 40 stolen bases, you had to be thinking about it, right? I mean, nobody's ever done it in big league history. I was, and a funny story, it's a true story. My first attempt to steal that bag I think Nieves, a left-handed pitcher, was, was throwing, and my mind said go, and my legs locked up on me. I actually got <laughs> nervous, and my legs just locked up. I go, oh my God, what are you doing? <laughs> so then, actually, the next pitch, I had to convince myself to take off and steal second base, <laughs> and I actually went that time. But I was supposed to steal actually on the first pitch, I think. Yeah. <laughs> That's how nervous sometimes, I was about it. Sometimes the home run is tough to get, though, right? You're sitting on, were you sitting on 39 for a while? Right. I think the home run, the 40th, is the hardest to get because there's only one way of hitting a home That's run. Right. The fence. That's right. But, I mean, you could steal regular second base or, or the back end of a, mm -hmm. of, a, of a double steal. So there's a lot of ways to do that, but there's only one way to hit home runs. Yeah. So I always thought the 40 stolen base would, would be the easiest part of it. In Cap, it was County Stadium. Yeah. Your stomping grounds in Milwaukee. Mm -hmm. And I remember working with the great Monty Moore, and Monty said, Ray, you have to go down in the dugout, so when Jose's game is over, you have to interview him, and I interviewed him down in the dugout right. on the field, and, uh, but that was, that was quite a treat. I mean, 40-40, if you thought about it, I think the great uh, Mickey Mantle once said, well, if it's such a big deal, I would have done, done it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I was but, like, gee, thanks, Mickey. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. Yeah, I, you, you remember that, don't you? Yeah. I worked so hard for that, darling. You could have done it every, every year. <laughs> No, it, it wasn't that easy, and I, I think what we say three have done it, and yeah. that's it. Yeah. So that, if it were that easy, then a lot more would be doing it. But uh, and what's funny, what made it worse is that people wanted me to steal the 40th base at home yeah. when we came back off the trip. And I said, wait a minute, what if I don't get the opportunity? What if I don't get on base? What if I don't get hurt? What I mean, what if, what if I get hurt? And I was kind of thinking about it. Should I just wait and do it in front of the home crowd? But what if it never would have happened? Well, that would have been the worst. I figured it out. Maybe Ricky followed you then because Ricky waited to get home to steal the all-time Lou Brock record. Yeah, you think? No, he was just stealing <laughs> bases at will. <laughs> well, it just happened to, to right. be at home when he right. did it. So it worked out. Well, for Ricky. Yeah, he could steal anything. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, the, the thing about the 40-40, if you really think about it, if you have a power hitter, it's going to hit home runs. But typically a power hitter is not going to be able to steal bases. So to combine those two, that, that says a lot about the ability 
to have the speed to steal bases, but also the ability to have the power to hit home runs. Because that's it's not that easy to have both combined. But you know what, what was the worst thing and the dumbest thing I did? I actually came into spring training and said I was going to do the 40-40, <laughs> and I didn't realize that no one had ever done it in the history of the game. I thought players had had you know done the 40-40 before. I didn't really see it as that tough of a thing. Of course, very difficult, but I had worked on on it so hard during the offseason. Sitting there in front of the media, they asked me, what do you want to accomplish this year? I said, well, I want to do the 40-40. And they kind of laughed at me. They said, for real, for real, tell us what you want to do. I said, well, I want to do the 40-40. And at a point in time, I thought I put my foot in my mouth. So I realized at that point that I had to do the 40-40. And you know, nothing was going to stop me. And if I did do the 40-40, hopefully I would be recognized as one of the best players yeah. in the world. Well, you did it. I thought you were going to say the biggest mistake you made was pitching. <laughs> well, that too. That, well, that came after. <laughs> and I got the scar to prove it. As a matter of fact, you know, it's funny because this, this scar is huge. I saw one of the guys, guys at Tommy John. Now they're half the size. How come I got such a big scar? Maybe because my arm's bigger than his? I don't know. But my scar was huge. I'm like, Jesus, I'll never pitch again. Forget this. Well, you, you, you've solved a lot of problems for a lot of general managers and managers because when you did and the result, they said, yeah. we can never let a position player pitch That's again. it. It's over. Yeah. Especially, I mean, in blowouts, that's one thing, but not in your case. I, uh -huh. I think that changed everything. So. I was a big guinea pig. I was an <laughs> experiment, and it failed. That's all there is to it. Well, no more of that. Yes, he had a great career and uh, a lot to be proud of. Thank I, you, think, I think that's the, the biggest thing. And, uh, Again, the reception you got here tonight says it all and how much the fans appreciate you coming back. And The fans were great. Thank you, know, you fans. Yeah. I really appreciate that. And I'm it sure your amazing. teammates as well. You know, yes, and, uh, everyone was yeah. great. Thank you. Yeah, for people to remember, you had a twin brother, identical to Ozzie. And what was he <clears> doing? Identical to him. He's actually managing in the Can-Am League. Uh, he played a little bit in, in the major league level. He was with the Oakland A's for a short right. period of time. Uh, I forget what year it was, 90 or 91, when Ricky was hurt. They brought him up. And ironically enough, I think in the same game, I hit a ball down the line off the wall that threw me on a second. I think his next at bat, or they have been after that, he actually hit a ball down the line too, and they threw him on a second. <laughs> Talk about coincidences. That, that was just amazing. Right? And he has swung very well since. Rips that one to left field, and that's a fair ball off the wall. He hit it so hard, he's going to have to hustle for his double. That ball's there ahead of him. Here's Ozzie Canseco. Boy, did he put on a show in batting practice tonight. Looked like his brother. Unless Jose was in his uniform and nobody <laughs> knew it. He wasn't. Because <laughs> he had about seven or eight balls way out of here tonight. It's a breaking ball for a call strike. First time on this particular telecast for our A's regular network. They've seen Ozzy in a game. Pitch it outside. Jose Canseco's twin brother, and they really look alike. And they sound alike too. I had him on the radio pregame show tonight, and if I would have closed my eyes, I wouldn't. I wouldn't have had any idea who I was talking to. He just did. Henderson rounding third and heading home. Ozzy's going to try for two. Jose was thrown out down there, and so was Ozzy. Well, he was a little bit anxious, but he got the base hit and tied the ball game, and they just threw the ball out. That'll be a keepsake, and he's getting a standing ovation. And there's his brother. Yeah, yeah we yeah. do the same thing. With but him. but I, I always thought and wondered if, as identical as you were, that you'd just trade uniforms. You know, and uh, you know that's that's a funny story because we have done that in the past to full people. I mean, he almost went into a boxing match for me. I don't know if you're. Oh, <laughs> No, but of course, the tattoo gave it away on the arm. Well, certain things you don't want to do something for your brother. But and he, that may he, be one of them. He was going to take one for me. <laughs> Tap slowly. Donaldson waits. Double play. Grabs it. Throws. What a play by Donaldson. My goodness. So that's how the inning ends. Just one run for the Orioles. And Jose Canseco, thanks for stopping Thank by. Guys. Enjoy the rest of the yeah. night, all right? Enjoy seeing you get great. Right, right. You still have the much. strongest grip on the planet. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ, kill me. <laughs>